What a beautiful fish, isn't it? You know what the specialty of this fish is? What? I'm Zachary Fowler. And that's the Wooded Beardsman. And this is season four of the Wilderness Living Challenge. The goal of the challenge is to gain or maintain our body weight while eating nothing but wild foods. So last October, I headed up to the backwoods of Canada to meet up with the Wooded Beardsman and do just that for seven days. Last time on Wilderness Living Challenge Season 4. Woohoo! He's down, he's right in the river. Let's get him. Cool, let's go. You can always do a sniff test. This will keep for two weeks and then probably it's even becoming more tender. That's gonna be good. Oh, it's best to have a hobo reel be smooth at the top so you can zing your line out there and let it slide off the end of here. Oh my goodness. Looks like a palace. Like something from a Stephen King movie. I mean, got a couple. Yeah, this is like the perfect place to film a horror movie. Yeah. And now, day six of Seven Day Wilderness Living Challenge. Ugh. It's wet, it's cold. And I don't want to get out of my nice warm hammock. <laughs> so cozy. But we're changing lodgings. Sooner we get going, sooner we can get on to new things. Hopefully some catfish, rabbits, rabbits in a new place. There weren't any here. We've gone through all the resources that are here for the most part and found them fairly thin so it's more prudent to move on now here we go Once again, the most beautiful part of the hammock. Last thing comes down is your covering. If it had been raining during this whole packing process, I would have been safe and secure until I rolled up the last piece of my gear. Yeehaw, and I could have even taken it with me just loose and covered stuff up in the boat. I love this war bonnet hammocking thing. Awesome stuff. I'm, I will tell you what, I will just be happy to be aware from sleeping next to this uh, Blair Witch Hole, creepy hole thing next to me. <laughs> Been sticking in my craw. <laughs> Yeeha, on to new places. There we go, we're out of here. Try to leave every campsite I come to better than it was when I arrived. And uh, no bits of garbage. Looks good. Let's get out of here. All right, pockets are emptied. We're gonna see if we've lost any weight. Chris is up first. Let's see what you got. How'd you do?
All right, 140 even. That's One, not too bad. I think it's a pound four, or pound eight, I think. Pound four, I think, is what I'm down. Five days. That's not too bad. Two hundred point two. So I am down five pounds. That's like a pound a day. I might have already been on a downhill slide of losing weight already because of the ketogenic diet. So just goes to show you fat isn't fat eating fat does not make you gain weight. When you're determined to go fishing and your ex-wife's car won't make it up into the bushes. It says no parking. Not no re-landscaping so you can drive around said fence through the woods. Nailed it. Yee-hoo! We're right here at our new location. Catfishing Central on the river. Looks to be good, beautiful spot. Just like all of them here in Canada. Look at that. So I figured I could set my hammock up or I could do a bit of fishing. I decided fishing was a better bet. So I'm just going out here with a little worm. Nothing too special. Chris says there's some bass in here and some fall fish. Fall fish we could use for bait for the Catfish and uh, bass we could use for eating. All right, got my first fish here in Canada. A uh, smallmouth bass. And uh, yeehaw, see if I can do it again. Definitely we're gonna be eating this guy tonight. I am hungry for something besides the huge. Oh, yeah, got one. Okay. Oh, another small bass. There we go. Show it to me. <laughs> Somebody's got fish envy. I got two, and he's got no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's actually a gray squirrel. Did you hear that call in the woods? <laughs> Another one! I got a fighter! There we go, three. This one's a little small, putting him back. All right, I better stop and get my campsite set up. We got bigger fish to fry. Catfish, that's the plan for tonight. So if I get my stuff set up in time, I can be out here at peak moment. As Chris was saying, they bite bigger and harder at the beginning, and that's what we're looking for. Bigger fish, bigger food, more food, the more you eat, the less you lose the challenge. That's the whole point of the Wilderness Living Challenge is to maintain or gain weight while living off of wild food. If you are just tuning in, make sure you go back and watch from the beginning. The playlists are down below for Chris's channel, The Wooded Beardsman, and my channel. Check it out. Looking for a place for my hammock. The beauty of them is they're super forgiving because all you need is some trees. And unless you're in the desert, there's almost, almost always some trees. This looks like a good spot. First I pick a, a main tree, two main trees, and then two outer trees to tie my lines to so I don't have to run around and put stakes in and things like that. And something else very important, always look for deadfalls. There's a dead standing one here if there's a windstorm in the night. I don't want to get out of my bed. You know, rainstorm, windstorm, and check and see if I'm secure then. Do it now. It's just something so manly about pushing over a tree. Go out in the woods, have a nice walk, find a dead tree, push it over. Be careful though, because sometimes the tops will crack if they're really rotten and fall back on your head. So you gotta be good at it. Lifetime practice right here.
I don't want to be at this all night setting this hammock up. It's beautiful. Love the war bonnet hammock, but they take a little bit longer than tents. So I'm going to do it the quick way. There we go. Doing it the fast way. All set up so we can go catfishing. No bites yet. No bites? This is a little worrying. You got always, your bell? I'm always concerned that there's not a bite and there should be a bite. Yep, bell's He's got there. a bell. His uh, line, fishing pole, headed out. Nice. You got another bell for me? Nope. You got to make your own. Oh, okay. I found that one in the tree. <laughs> All right, so I got to go uh, hunt myself down a bell. I think a soda can would do it. Yep. See what I can find. I haven't had a chance to really make anything when the two of us have been hanging out. He never stops going. I mean, that is the point, is to catch and cook as much stuff as possible, not to lose weight in the challenge. So let's find that bell, see if we can't get some catfish. All kinds of chip bags and other garbage. There better be, there's gotta be one beer can I can make a bell out of. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> It's always a relief to get the first fish, then you know there's actually fish around. Not a big one, but we'll see once it gets closer. So uh, you got you felt you felt the bite, right? I felt it nibbling when you walked away, and, and it swam toward us. So that's why the bell didn't keep going. Yeah. So it was always there. All right. Let's see if we can get this. Man, now it's alive. Oaks it into the net. There we go. First fish. We're not skunked, my friend. Beautiful fish. Isn't it? You know what the specialty of this fish is? What? Picking up detritus. Just e eating all the garbage on the bottom. Mm. But they taste great. I love cat. Catfish is like my new favorite fish. It's, a, it's pretty close to eating trout. Love them. When you hold the catfish, you hold like I'm holding it, right? Underneath, uh, thumb, finger. The reason you do that is because they have very sharp barbs here. Like that's hard as a rock here. Sharp as a knife, both sides and the dorsal fin as well. If you get jabbed with that, I've never been jabbed with it, so I can't vouch for how much it hurts, but I've been told it feels like a bee sting or a wasp sting. So it's not permanent. It's not gonna kill you or anything, but it, it does hurt, so. That's uh, the, how the fish uses, what the fish uses to protect itself against predators. So if, it, you know, if another fish tries to grab it, you know, it gets all that poison and obviously doesn't like it. So when you grab it, grab underneath like I have it, cradle it, and you'll be fine. All right, all rigged up to get in on the uh, catfish action. Basically, got at the end of your line, you got a treble. And then you got another one tied on just a little bit below that. Inch and a half, two inches. Piece of yummy beaver meat trading a few calories for a bunch more calories once we catch a catfish. Put both hooks into your piece of beaver meat. I'm gonna send it out there and see if I can't catch a catfish. Just playing with it. Ah, oh, no, just playing with it. I missed him. All right, so Zach was snoozing and losing. This year now, this year, and bam, we got him. Fish on. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. The hook's not hooked properly. There we go. Nice. <laughs> That was, Nailed it. That was so, oh no, it was good. We, were, we had two hooks in there. Oh, that yeah. scared me though. Whew. Good job. There we go. Two down. Two down. Got him. Unless I got the bottom. 
There we go. Three for Chris. We can get him. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. We get to eat. All right. All right. And get the fire going. All right, there's our catfish. Ready to go, gutted. Chris got it down by the river and de-headed. And we're just gonna put it over here on the fire, on the coals. Well, we gotta get the coals there first. So we're gonna go and put some of these, the two bass that I caught earlier, in the frying pan. This is a cast iron pan, to clean a cast iron pan. You don't want to ruin the seasoning. You bring it to a boil and you wipe it out. That's all you gotta do, otherwise you ruin the seasoning. There we go, boiled it, splashed it about. It looks like it's brand new. i throw some fat in there to bear fat. And then I'll throw the fish in there and we'll be having fried up bass. A little adobo on the fish to bring out the wonderful flavors. Fish. All right, fish is done. Pick that up. All right, look at that bass fried up in bear fat, and I got a couple pieces of bear fat, crispy bear fat. I'm gonna have with it. It's gonna be good. First fish catch of the season four wilderness living challenge. Fried up in bear fat. Oh, oh I think that's the key to some variety, right? Mm. Having some fish finally. Going after the big game stuff, we need to get the fats and all that stuff. Now I have some fish, different texture, different flavor. You know, That's I good. never got sick of fish. No, when you were out there? No. You're talking about being on alone. 87 days, 63 you, fish. You guys don't know he's, he was on alone. Yeah. <laughs> on the History Channel. On the History Channel. You can watch it on uh, Amazon now. Survived 87 days eating fish. Yep. I don't know how you did it, man. Soak it up in the bear fat. Oh, I wish I'd had some bear fat out there. Uh. <laughs> like fish chowder. You can almost eat that every day. It doesn't get weird. Not like beaver meat? No, not like <laughs> beaver meat after four days of eating it. Nice day. Hello, sir. Welcome, welcome to Canada. Get off the road. Bienvenue. I'm gonna get hit. Let's see if... Oh, just a second. Welcome to Canada. Say cheese. Cheese. All right, coals are just right. Flames have died down, so we're gonna put the catfish on. Boom. There you have it. Right on the hot coals. Cook it up. Cook for 10 minutes on hot coals. Give her a flip with the old cold steel shovel. Let her cook for 10 more. All ready to be eaten. I'm so hungry. Skin peels right back. Protected it while it cooked on the coals. Oh, look at that. Mmm. That is so good. Mmm. Catfish is awesome. Next time on Wilderness Living Challenge Season 4, we head to our final location, harvesting some new food along the way, and really feast for the last 48 hours of the challenge. Bone marrow for breakfast. All those delicious sounds. Alright, it's almost bedtime. Got the fire going, put the stew pot on so it heats it up to sanitize it. A little bit of leftover fish in the fry pan for the morning. And the uh, trash pandas have been out, so we cleaned everything up around here and made sure our meat is that we have left is hanging and out of the way and uh, 
we took our two fish down there and we had to put them in the river but we put a rock on it and put them out into like almost 10 12 feet out so they don't come along and just snag them off the edge where they were tied up floating for tomorrow's food yeah in your tent all right it is bedtime chris apparently climbed right into his tent as i was climbing to mine a hammock here and the trash pandas came back and they were licking the pots right next to the fire that frying pan that had the fish in it apparently so we had cleaned up all the food except for that one thinking of leaving it right like next to the fire like an inch from the fire it was on a rock next to the fire like the fire pit rock and uh they're pretty nervy they're hungry trying to put on some weight for winter and we're not very scary to them apparently so stick a fork in me i'm done thanks for watching see you next time fowler out